Hi everyone. Okay, we had some tech difficulties. So I'm re I've had to decide to use phone instead of computer. That wasn't working. Okay, here we are. All right, sorry for the delay in getting started, um, but here we go. I'm really excited to be here. We're gonna just move a few more things. There we go. Okay, super excited to be here talking about a topic no one usually wants to talk about. Um, but I, I just want to first say it's amazing to be part of this project and um, to be working with Eris Safar on the Light of Infinite Festival. I mean, that's like the best name ever. Um, and there's so much we could talk about. There's so much we could be doing. I was thinking like maybe we'll do a meditation. There's many things I, I want to do with all of you. Um, but here we are. This is what we're going to do. Um, why do I want to talk about this? Why am I here talking about why does God want me to be sick? Why that be my topic? So for those who don't know, who are hearing about me for the first time or who are here joining us live for the first time, um, I was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis, when I was 12. So I lived most of my life with disease, well actually about half of my life. Um, so after 18 years of living with illness, I just was like, enough, I cannot live like this anymore. I cannot continue. Um, to live this way. I was extremely limited and, and for anyone else on here watching who's experienced any kind of chronic symptom, even if it's you know been a specific thing and not ongoing, um, you know that you have this feeling of like you're just always, like you can't really plan, you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop, just never really know what's, what's gonna be, right? So I didn't, I just could not, I could not live like that anyway, anymore, okay? So, I set out to heal. I always believed, I always had this voice inside that said, like, of course the body can heal. The body creates human life. Of course the body can heal. But, you know, I was diagnosed, as I said, as a little girl. I was 12, right? So I didn't, like, what, <laughs> like, what was I supposed to do with that? Like, knowing there was a voice inside that said, but the body creates human life. Of course the body can heal. It's a tiny little voice as a 12-year-old. So later on in my 20s, I said, enough is enough. I got to figure this out. I've got to figure this out. So that started my journey, and that's why this is my topic. That's I I love I, I love talking. It's gonna sound really weird, but, but about illness because for me it's so much more than illness. It's how the body is communicating. It's how the soul is communicating. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And so this is my whole life. So I didn't know when I was on my healing journey that I was this was gonna be my career. I just wanted to get healthy. I just wanted my life back. You know. And then I got my life back and my doctors acknowledged the shift and, and, and took me off medication. That's all I cared about. I wanted to just go live my life. I had a career, I had a job, all that. And, and then in the process, um, word of mouth started spreading and people started saying, Hey, um, you know, like, could you help me to do what you did? And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know, maybe like I, I could try, I could try to, but I don't know if what worked for me is going to work for you, you know, and, and because I was willing to try anything, I spent about two years beginning to end of my healing journey, willing to just try whatever, anything I could. And so because it, I was in that mindset, I wasn't sure what was it going to be that was going to make the difference for the next person. So I told the two people that asked me if I would help them, like, look, this is an experiment. I don't know. Right. Hang on. Let me So I told them it's an experiment. We'll try our best. And um, it worked. They were getting better. Their symptoms were improving. So I went, okay, that's interesting. I'm onto something here. And it took, it took a while till I felt comfortable enough to really start working with more people. But I kind of put together like, I'm a therapist. I'm really comfortable speaking and sharing and talking about my own journey. Someone else who wants to go down this path is going to have to do what I did. Put all these pieces together, trying to understand what illness is, what symptoms are. What does that mean? Mind, body, soul, connection, alignment. They're going to have to start from scratch. Whereas like I now I'm kind of figuring out a system that works and, and I'm articulate and I get it. And I understand the science. I also like, I always loved science. That was like one of my favorite subjects. I love neuroscience. I love biology. So that was really easy for me to then start to kind of hack the body. So this is my career now. I get to help other people with chronic illness, with chronic symptoms, living with pain, migraines, a whole range of things. I get to help them to heal. 
um, which is profound. They get long lasting relief from their symptoms. So I just like, I thank God every day. <laughs> I think it's like, the, the, I, I just, I, I never would have thought this would be my life. And it's incredible because I was like the poster child of MS growing up. Like I was literally like I was marketed all over the place. I was a little girl, like, you know, fundraising and spreading the message and sharing hope and inspiring others to like be grateful for what you have. You know, I had days I, I couldn't walk or I couldn't see. So in any case, so, so I went from being like the poster child for disease, for illness to the poster person <laughs> for health and wellness. Um, so again, like just massive life shift. So that's why this is my topic. That's why I want to talk about this today because I have a short amount of time with you, but if I can help inspire someone else out there who's living with illness to know like this is not punishment, okay? You do not need to live your entire life with illness. Oh, that's that's like I cannot tell you how often I hear that. Like there's just my lot in life. And that's what God decided. I'm supposed I'm supposed to be sick. So that's why I want to talk about this. If I can inspire I mean I have the chills just as I'm saying this. Like if one person watching this goes home and says, wait, like maybe, maybe it could be different. Maybe there is another option out there. That's everything that will be worth all of it to me. So let's jump in. So first I just want to, I just want to bless everybody watching with complete health, um, of mind, body, and soul. And I want to say that if you are struggling with symptoms, ask God for healing. It's really easy for us to, we're better at like asking for others for things than ourselves. Okay. So I want to say like, start by asking for the healing. Okay. Start by asking for it. Just plugging in my phone here because originally we were going to use computers. So I want to make sure that that's okay. So, so start by asking for it. I also learned this amazing, um, this amazing thing once I was on the other side of my journey that someone taught me that there's a, like a Hasidic, um, um, idea that when we get a certain like miracle in our lives, and this is a miracle, that when we bless others in this topic, we have a very high power to to share that miracle, to share that blessing. So that's why I want to start by saying I bless everyone with complete health. That's where I want to start. Okay. So the question, right? The question that that I started this topic with, okay, um, this this session with, does God want me to be sick? And it's I think that's a really easy question. If I believe in God, if I believe in a, you know, ultimate creator, um, then, and I'm sick, then that creator m must be connected to what I'm experiencing right now, right? So let's dive into that, okay? So first of all, the answer is no. No, God does not want any of us to be sick, okay? God does not want any of us to be sick. Sick. It's why. It's why. So we have so much around wishing, like, like blessings for health, and intention for health and healing. We have all of that. Okay. So and we have so many examples, so many verses from all parts of Torah, all parts of Judaism and Scripture talking about healing. Right. We have Kelna Rafanala. We have so many things on healing. So that would be like contradictory for like, well, God wants you to be sick, but then. Why is there such an emphasis on, on health and wellness and healing? Okay. So, but then, but then why, why would this all knowing master of the world creator, how could it be that then sickness could be allowed? Then, then what's the point of illness and how is that even possible? Right. If that's not what God wants, then why would anybody be sick? Okay. So it kind of takes us to another level, right? Are you guys hearing this? And if this is resonating for anyone, like, please let me know. Even if like, you're like, this is a crazy question. I have no idea where we're going with this. But if you're like, yeah, actually like, yeah, what is the deal with that? Or if you're just struggling with symptoms and this is like what you need to hear right now, please tell me, like, it helps me to know like we're all in this journey together. Okay. So we have a few important points on this topic. Okay. And here's the thing that like totally blew my mind. Okay. Humans asked for illness. I was totally mind blown. My husband taught me this and I was like, how have I been in this field? I've been in this field for a decade and only like, we just got married in May. Okay. We just got married and okay. Maybe not 10 months ago. Okay. But like, so this is new. I just learned this, even though this has been my whole life is, is healing is mind, body healing and wellness and spiritual alignment. So 
Jacob asked for illness in the Torah. What? Like, why? Why would we ask for illness? That's crazy. And Jacob asked for illness because what was happening before is that when someone died, it was like, poof, it was sudden. They were just done, gone. And Jacob wanted time. He wanted time with his loved ones. He wanted to be able to say goodbye. So he actually asked for illness, which again, like when I learned that totally blew my mind. Like, wait, we asked. So there was no, there was not illness in this world. So God created a world initially without illness. And then, (laughs) excuse me, our forefathers came and said, Hey, I, I need to know. I want to know when it's coming. I want to know when I'm near the end of this physical reality so that I can, I can say goodbye, that I can impart wisdom, that I can spend time in a different way. Right? That's pretty fascinating, right? So that's like the first most important thing that we have to consider. Now, <laughs> that, that, that brings so many more questions. Okay, it's one thing if Jacob asked, I didn't ask. Why am I living with illness? Okay. So, or why was I living with illness? Right. But I'm, I'm trying to like relate it to anybody watching who might be living with symptoms. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it might be one thing for Jacob to ask, but I haven't. So why am I dealing with it? So the Mitla Rebbe, um, who's a Hasidic master in the like Lubavitch dynasty. So the Mitla Rebbe says in the name of the Alter Rebbe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> He says this incredible thing, which by the way, like the story of how I found this particular like paragraph is mind blowing. I like found it by accident. I, I opened a book, one like a huge book. I just opened it to a random page and just started reading it. This was what it was saying. And I was like, what's happening? (laughs) Totally mind blowing. Okay. So, and of course it was like not random. It was for me, you know? So the Mitla Rebbe says, that or explains that um, illness is considered the most compassionate way for God to um, ex- like to for God to exact. Mm, it's a tough word. I'm going to use the word judgment, but it's in in Hebrew. It's din. It's like it's like you know God. God has many parts parts to him. There's there's din and there's rachamim. There's judgment and there's mercy and we're always asking for mercy we always want mercy and so the Mittler always says what's really interesting is that this is where mercy comes into din in illness that's also really interesting like but people suffer and they could suffer for a long time and like why why that why that so he explains this incredible thing he says because illness is not about something that you're you're just supposed to experience so other kinds of judgments or you're just, you have to experience, you can't do much about it. You know, a car accident, bankruptcy, like that was a consequence of something else going on in life or maybe even a past life. There was some kind of rectification happening and like, that's it. It is what it is. Okay. That's, that's the tikkun. That's the rectification in that event. Illness is completely different. He says, he says, the reason it's so merciful is because when God um, allows illness to unfold, What's happening is that God is inviting us into relationship because God knows that healing is possible, right? And the Mittler ever says this, every cure exists before the illness. So then why, like why, then what's the point? Why are we in that paradigm? And then why illness at all? If you have the cure and then also, by the way, how come so many of us are walking around without that cure? Like, Like what's going on here? And so he says that we, we, the the idea of illness is not just to live your life sick it's to go go deep on that process really really do deep work with illness with the symptoms and that in that process you develop a deeper closer relationship with god it's a way for god to draw us close okay so how do we do that okay how do we do that what does that mean Okay, so I want to make sure like everybody's with me so far. Okay, we started with, does God want me to be sick? No, God does not want that, right? This is why we're always praying for health. We have so many verses throughout Torah about health. Okay, God has, for those who don't know, there are 72 names of God. There's one that's specifically for healing. So 
That's that's number one. No, God does not want any of us to be sick. Then why does illness exist? One, humans ask for it. Okay, we asked for that. We wanted to have a different kind of relating to our loved ones. We wanted a different kind of relationship to death. Okay, in the end of our phys like physical lifetime on this plane, in this reality. Okay, and then the other reason is that God, God is inviting us into relationship, inviting us into a new way of being. So let's just be with that. Okay, so now I want to I want to talk about how do we do that? How does that work? What does that mean? Look, I could talk about this for hours. I'll be totally honest. Okay, this is like the core of what I do. I love it. It's amazing. And people often don't realize when they start working with me and they start going on this path that they their their relationship with the creator with their own soul is going to totally transform. But it happens like day after day after day, all of a sudden they start hearing their soul. They start knowing that they're a soul in a body and and experiencing that for the first time. So I can't convey it in this, you know, this short little talk, but I'm going to do my best to kind of tell you how that works. So essentially... The soul comes into the body and it's really hard. That's like a really tough thing. The soul is this huge, expansive entity, right? It's huge. It's all this light, it's all this power, it's one with the divine and it's just totally blissed out and then comes into this teeny tiny little body, okay? That's hard, that's uncomfortable. That's not, that's not delicious, okay? And it's, and it's really tough to be in this small body. But the soul's job is to work with the body. The body's job is to work with the soul. They're actually supposed to be a team. Something most of us don't think about. We think like, this is just me. This is, this is who I am, right? But it's not. It's, it's actually a separate entity. The body has its own living, um, like it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a living creature. And it has its own desires and its own drives. And it also has its own goals for you, for your life. It wants to work with you. It wants to be aligned with you. It wants to help you be you, the best you. And it wants to help you connect to God, the creator. Okay. And how do we do that? By feeling our own soul. Okay. So hang on. So now soul and body are going to work together. And they're going to work together to help me experience my soul. Okay. So the way that works is that. Well, for, I mean, there's many ways that that works. Okay. So let's take, for example, like, um, I'm like, there's so many places, so many directions I could go right now. Okay. So first, let me give you like a metaphor. I want to give you a metaphor. So I want you to imagine that there's like a four-year-old who wants to make breakfast. It's, it's this four-year-old, it's her mom's birthday. She wants to make breakfast for mom. Okay. She goes into the kitchen. It's early morning and she takes eggs and flour. She knows somehow they come together and she knows like, you know, water, milk, flour might make a pancake. Like she, she got that down, you know, but she doesn't really know what she's doing. <laughs> she's four, right? So she starts making breakfast for mom. Now, of course, mom's going to wake up to a huge mess in the kitchen. Okay. This kid has got like egg in her hair. There's batter on the ceiling. There's flour everywhere. Right? So instead of breakfast on her birthday, Mom has to clean the kitchen all day, okay? So this is the thing. This is how we feel when the body's communicating. The body is saying, hey, wait, you went down this path. That's not you. That doesn't, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't, that's out of alignment, right? And, and that's not me. So it's saying, wait, can, wait, let's not go that direction. Can we go this other direction? That's so much more you. That's so much more aligned. So it's trying to get our attention. It's trying to pull us another way. And for anybody here who's living with symptoms, I want you to think about that. I want you to reflect on what is different about my life today from before symptoms to now and where am I actually more me? Now, that doesn't mean we have to be sick to, in order to continue those things, but what we want to do is to start to reflect on that and own that and go, well, what, what could my body be wanting? Actually, we always think that living with symptoms, my body just wants rest. I, I cannot tell you. I used to think that I was like the, the like best. I was the expert at listening to my body. I 100% believe that. I thought I was so in tune with my body and I heard everything my body said. What did that mean? I mean that every time I had a symptom, I rested. I took it easy. I took a nap. I slept more. I canceled my day. No, your body wants you to be in life, but it wants you to be in your mission aligned life. Okay? So what happens is 
it's trying to get your attention, but it gets your attention like like what feels like to us is like the messy kitchen and then I have to spend the whole day cleaning. So like, well, wait, no, now I just lost the job or didn't get the promotion or like, you know, had to had to postpone the project or can't pay the bill because I'm stuck in bed. So that feels very confusing. That feels very like far off. Like how, how is that helpful? Like what's going on there? So this is where the piece that the Mittler Rebbe said comes in. We have to go really, really deep. We have to go really deep on this. And start to work with the body to hear the soul. Like, what, what, what do you want right now? What do you need right now? What's, what's actually going on? What am I supposed to do with this? Okay. So let's talk about that. Okay. So. So the way it works is first we want to learn to get quiet. Most of us are moving so fast. And especially once illness is, is in the picture, it's <laughs> like the noise, the volume only gets louder, right? Because now I wasn't just like doing my regular day-to-day -day stuff. Now I'm also, ma I'm also managing um, uh, health insurance and all these crazy medical bills and financial aid for the medicine and 17 medications a day and the exact timing of each of them and all the specialists like, now the noise in the brain is so much louder, okay? So we have to acknowledge two things. First of all, I've got this huge soul that's trying to manage being in a body. And number two is that the body was built in a very specific way. And I need to honor how that body was made. That body cannot handle all that noise. This body needs peace and quiet. And I know you're thinking, what? Well, that's impossible. <laughs> like in the world around us, like, are you kidding? In this day and age, I'm si hello, I'm on Facebook. Like I can see all the notifications happening at once and I can see the comments and I can see the, you know, how many people are watching. It's like my brain is processing so much at once. Okay. It's too much noise. Okay. And every day is something. Every day is a new thing. Okay. And then you like, forget it. You turn on the news, forget it. The, the brain and the body are like in shutdown. The thing is, the brain doesn't know that with every stressful moment that comes up, it doesn't know that you're not in danger. It's interpreting that as the lion is chasing me. When the lion chases me, it shuts down. It cannot take the noise. Okay? It shuts down. Okay? And then affects all the organs in the way the organs function. Why? So you could run for your life from the danger. But we're talking about like day-to-day -day life. Okay? So the Mittler Rebbe is saying, the Mittler Rebbe is saying, get quiet. Learn to get quiet so that you could, when we get quiet, we can hear our soul. When it's all this noise, I can't hear my soul. My body thinks I'm always in danger. It starts to break down. So if anybody here is living with symptoms, trace it back. Go look at what was going on in your life before that. And this is not like me saying this. This is medicine saying this, by the way. Most doctors will tell you like, yeah, stress is going to aggravate an autoimmune disease, a neurological disease. Like pretty much like you name it, a pain disorder, like they're going to tell you stress will aggravate this. Okay. Stress means a lot of things. Stress is not just like, you know, I lived through, you know, a massive traumatic event, let's say like 9-11. Okay. Stress is not just that. Stress is, I got a really high water bill this month. Like that, that's stress. Okay. But so what? It's like, what am I supposed to do? So we need to get quiet and we don't realize that so much of Torah is actually about this. It's about this. So God is not just saying, I want to, I'm giving you this thing. First of all, you guys asked for it. You asked for illness. That's number one. Number two, I'm not just giving it to you so that you could struggle. I, I want to be in a relationship. Okay. So, and by the way, I've given you all the tools and steps to get quiet. You're not just supposed to like rush through the sea door and just mumble through your prayers. You're not supposed to just like rush through the day. One thing that I say, if, if Judaism is anything, it's the religion of mindfulness. That's what it is. Pause before you put the food in your mouth. Like think about what you're doing next. Oh, look at the schedule of your day. Oh, I have to pray before this time. So I really got to break up my day. I need to take breaks. 
I need to create space in my brain. And also remember what is most important. It's not the job and it's not the career title and it's not all these things that I thought were most important. And by the way, like as the Jewish people, we're really good at that. Like we're all really good at like, let me get the top title. Let me work, 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 work. Let me make sure that every Jewish mother is proud of me. Okay. So like all of that is at play and all of that is stress and pressure on the body and the body goes, but I just want to be with the soul. I just want to be with the creator. That's what I want. Okay. And it's trying to work through that. So Torah does a few things. It's teaching us to slow down. It's teaching us to get space. It's teaching us to be mindful and to pause throughout our day and before every action that we take. You guys watched me take, drink the water earlier, right? I stopped. I said a blessing. Then I drank the water. I'm in the middle of a talk. Now's the time to say thank you to the creator before I put that water in my body. Yeah, it is. Because that's actually more important. That few seconds that I have between me and the creator and the water is more important than making sure that I'm polished in front of you. Okay. And we get confused by all of this. We're all, we are all really good at being perfectionists. Okay. Well, actually we fail at it because we're not perfect. So we need to stop trying because we weren't made perfect. If you were meant to be perfect, you would have been created that way, but we're all still trying. That's also too much pressure on the body. So let's come back to this. So the Mittler Rebbe you say, this is an invitation to be in relationship right? It's an invitation to be in a relationship. So what does that look like? What does that mean? So I start to pause. I take my time. I create space in my day. I focus on what really matters. You think your body cares if you're the number one author or the best mom? Nope. No. So getting into alignment with mind, body, and soul is, is when you get quiet, starting to have that space in the quiet, and we can call this quiet meditation. We can call this quiet hitbonanud. Um, you can call this quiet davening, tefillah, prayer. Okay, for each person, that, you could call it yoga, right? So many people tell me like they love their run. That's like they need their morning run. That's their quiet every day. Go ahead, do that. You know, when we get quiet, we can start to hear our inner voice. And I want you to take this <laughs> very literally. What is disease? It's this ease. It's a lack of ease. So just go at it really simply, just right on the surface. Where can I invite ease into my life more? Where can I do that more? What would that be like? What would that look like? Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this thing and da da da. And but like, but I can feel tension in my body when I think about that event, when I think about that thing and just to, to, to plan it causes so much tension. You know, my, my husband and I were supposed to, supposed to um, be in LA not last week, this week. And um, <coughs> we had so many issues with the flights. And like, finally, by like the fourth or fifth change on the flight, I mean, we're in the airport, we're exhausted. I was like, I was like, no, like, I no, I'm canceling. Like, this is just, I don't, I'm, I'm no longer the person who lives, I used to be the person who like so badly needed to be in control. That like, I have to find a way to still get the right flight, to get there on time, to da 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 and speak at the conference, and this is what I was supposed to be doing, and blah, blah, blah. But it's so much yummier to be like, okay, you know what? This must be happening for a reason, and whatever that is, I don't know yet, but this is not, I don't like, this doesn't feel good. This is just like a whole bunch of conflict and tension in my life, and I want ease. I choose ease. Now I'm not saying don't do hard things. I also am a big believer in doing hard things, but you can kind of tell when you're swimming upstream and a lot of us are really good at that. And if we're living with this ease, we're probably masters of that because there is a lot of conflict that comes up and we're trying so hard to just like maintain some normalcy. So we're holding on for dear life. But it, ironically it's in the, the, the surrendering, and I want to call it safe surrender. Surrender is a very scary word, but it's a safe surrender because I've not been on my own in free fall. I give it over to God. I give myself over to God. I imagine God holding me. So the Mittler Rebbe is saying, well, there's a profound relationship to be had, not just in the living with illness because that's difficult. And how do you still wake up every day and say thank you and give gratitude when like body parts might not be working. But there's a much deeper level where he says, 
in the process of developing that relationship, the body actually heals. So now I'm not talking about like, make sure you're standing in a synagogue and like beating your chest all day and like, okay, you gotta be sure you're on top of every mitzvah. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, and that's part of it, but from a deep love, from a deep passion, from alignment, not like a pressure, I'm supposed to, I have to, I'm doing this to heal. That's not alignment, right? Alignment is, that's interesting. Like why, why wash my hands? What does that mean? Like, why is there a mitzvah where like men put this thing on their head and on their arm and like, that's interesting. We do so much with our bodies. Like, interesting. That's probably not random because my, my body is really struggling to manage this life. My body does have limitations, but it's also very expansive. That's interesting. What is, what does this all have to do? Right? So learning that, going into that, understanding that, and then also getting to the core of like, excuse me, like, who do I really want to be? And can I let go of all the things that just are noise in the way? Because there is so much of that, guys. There's so much of that. And I was there. My life was so noisy. Okay. And I was, pri I used to pride myself on that. I used to pride myself on how busy I was and like how little time I had for anything. And like, if you would have thought, like told me meditation, like, yeah, right. I don't have time to meditate, let alone like I'm not going to sit still for five minutes. Like, why would I do that? There's so much to do. I loved how efficient I was and how much I was multitasking. That was really hard on my brain. There's literally like, of course, my body is dealing with symptoms. Of course, because the physical body is thinking she's being chased by a lion. She's being chased by a lion. She's being chased by a lion. If I'm being chased by a lion, the organs have to function differently. There's only so long it can sustain that something will happen. So Hashem comes and says, I made your body this way on purpose. Number one, to protect you if there is a lion. Number two, so that you can learn what's actually most important. And all of those stressors, that's not what actually matters. But I'd love to be in relationship with you. I'd love to connect with you. I'd love to go on this journey with you. And, and I, 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 yeah, I also built into your body a nice little healing switch. Of course you could heal. You create human life, of course, you could heal. So, I mean, there are many, many parts of Torah and there's so much in Jewish mysticism that goes much deeper on this. And hi, Julie, I see you. It's so nice to have you here. I love that you're here. Um, so, um, so, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, so, so what I want to, well, uh, there's, yeah, there's so much I could touch on. I want to, I want to talk about one other point. The Arizal says, um, the Arizal says, uh, so the Arizal is, is, um, probably one of the most well-known mystics and Kabbalistic masters. And most of what we know today from Kabbalah came through the Arizal. Okay. So the Arizal says that in the time of the full complete redemption, when Mashiach is completely revealed, the way in which we will know God the most, the way that we will understand God the closest, the way that we will feel like the, the closest to God's creation and abilities and power is going to be through the body. It's going to be through the body. So we think this body is holding me back and it's betraying me and it's limited and, you know, it's fat. Or I can't eat this food and I can't eat, uh, I have an allergy to this. And, I, and in that paradigm, yes, there are limitations. But what happens is when I work with the body, when I learn the body, when I get to know the body, I understand it's communicating my soul. It's my soul trying to talk to me. That's what it is. My soul is trying to talk to me through my body. And this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to come into relationship with God not for more suffering, for healing. That in that process, I get to see God in my body. And you guys, I, like, first of all, I get to experience this myself because like on a daily basis, I'm amazed by what I can do now that I couldn't do before, you know? And like, it just always, like, it's always, still to this day, I mean, I've been healthy for years now. And still to this day, there are things that just shock me, that surprise me. Like, oh, I could just do that? Oh, I don't have to think twice about that? Like, as I said, we were going to be traveling last week. I don't have to pack a ton, tons of medication. That's incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. You know? Like, 
I didn't have to spend four hours on the phone to like make sure I could work out the infusion at the infusion center in LA and blah, blah, blah. Like I just got to travel. Like it blew my mind. I closed that suitcase and I was like, wow, this is how healthy people travel. I've done that a lot <laughs> since being healthy, but like it still amazes me. That's feeling God, experiencing God in a revealed way in my own body. Just today, we had a course member, actually I'll share two amazing things from this week. Um, I, I teach a course called Get Your Body Back and um, we're on week six or seven now out of 11. Um, and on Sunday, we had a group member share that um, after four years of, um, of not being able to walk unaided, she started walking on her own after four years. Like, I mean, I just cried. Like, I just cried when she said that. Like, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the body embodying the divine. That's the, the body is saying, yeah, I'm, I am divine. I could totally do this. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to betray you. I'm trying to talk with you. I, I want to be in a relationship with you. Could we be in a relationship? And the beauty is, is that when we come into a relationship with the body, we're actually coming into a relationship with ourselves, our true selves. That's the, your true self is soul. It's pure soul. You are part of the divine. I, I read this amazing thing recently. Like you should be careful when you're talking to yourself, you're talking to God. Right? So we walk around saying things like, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so lazy. Oh, I totally screwed that up. I should have done this differently, blah, blah, blah. But you're going to talk to God that way? You're a failure. You're not perfect. Why aren't you more perfect? Right? You're stupid. So realizing like that is us. That's who we are. And most of us have not, like don't even have like a beginning concept of that. Most of us don't even have like a starting point for that. Okay? So... <clears throat> so I want you to start just being curious just be curious wait a second if I'm gonna have a light body <laughs> and and if I'm gonna have a light body and I'm gonna be in and I'm going to be um, I'm gonna be experiencing the highest level of the divine through my body well then what like, but, but it's got all these symptoms and all this pain and all this stuff. Um, so what we want to do in those moments is really say, like, I, I'm curious. I would like to be curious. What would it be like to, like, just be with my body in this moment? What would it be like to love my body in this moment? I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling limited. I'm feeling betrayed. What if I could just say to my body, like, I love you. I see that you're processing something. You're working through something. Okay, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I don't get it yet. I don't know what this is. I heard Kaylee talk about this thing. I just want to be with you right now. I just want to be with you and listen to you and honor you. Let's see. Let's see where we're going. Sorry, guys, I have to move. Um, but being curious in that, okay? And, and the the right we talked about what is disease it's dis-ease it's being out of out it's, it's it's being intention right so then when i'm upset with my body and i feel betrayed it just it just makes everything worse okay guys hang on we're gonna do some technical technical things here um got that going that looks good yeah but uh i don't think it's transmitting no it's not hold on hold on guys we're just helping my husband adam atala who's about to go live Hello. <laughs> um okay so let's just change this quickly can we do this it's okay what? okay see this is <laughs> if you guys should see what i just did it was very like uh um trying to be a perfectionist okay so what's the issue here what does this say it's uh, in spanish i'm working through it up to the story uh the edit details of the publication no this looks good uh, okay. so i don't know okay why don't you let's just start over <clears throat> i would say start over I would close it and I would start over. Maybe I can share in your channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. 
<clears throat> you want to just take over here? Maybe that's what you do. Okay, so what I want to say, the last thing I want to say is, um, here, you get, try try to do it here, and then let's see. And if not, I'm going to just give you the, I'm just going to give you the phone. So what I want to say is, you, it's going to sound very weird, but anybody living with illness, I want you to know, you, you were also Says, born to like heal it. Just in doing a test, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, no, hold Seems on. Seems like you seem alive because... So, but it's not. It's going to be here. It's testing you here. It's testing here. So just do this quickly. Do this. And then go to the other one. Okay. Sorry, guys. That's really distracting and I apologize. So what I want to say is if you are living with any symptoms, I want you to also know you were born to heal them. This is your divine birthright. This is what it means to have a soul and a body. You are totally capable of this. I know it sounds weird and esoteric and far off, okay? But you can do this. And if you need guidance, I'm here. But more than anything is like, just start to be curious, start to listen. Mm -hmm. And know that we, we like humans ask for this, as weird as that is, as weird as that is, okay? Um, what we're going to do, um, it's so weird. It was set up before. I don't know why this is doing this. No, it was set up and it was like I was there, but I know it was not really there. Nobody was able to see it, anything. Okay, so I'm just trying to help out. I don't want to take away from, um, from so your... So why don't we... No, why don't we just switch you over? This is done. Well, I'm just thinking you just switch you over to... I'll just sign out and you'll... Or you could just continue here. No, 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 they, they... No, I mean, I'm... Uh, I think that's what you got to do. I think you just got to nope. continue here. I tried to do the phone also. I couldn't do it in the phone normally because I wrote... Okay, it. guys, I'm signing off. Thank you. I hope this resonated Finish. with close, you today. Close, close. They're hearing oh. you. <laughs> you don't have to yell. They can hear you. Um, so, um, I hope this resonated. I hope this inspired someone. And I just want you to know, like, it's real. It's happening. People are healing. And the Rebbe said... The Lubavitcher Rebbe said that in this time, people are going to start experiencing spontaneous remission. So more than anything, just believe in that, trust that, lean into that, and, and remind yourself, yeah, your body creates human life. Of course you can do this, okay? And God knows you can do this. I know you can do this, okay? And we're cheering you on. And I'm wishing again, everybody, I just want to bless everyone with so, 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 so much health. And I also just want to dedicate this to the elevation of David Abraham Ben Baruch Shiloh that his soul should have an Aliyah. Amen. Okay. Thank you everyone.